You have questions, we have answers. This is Jane Muller. And this is Ken Muller. Welcome to our show, all about real estate with Ken and Jane. And Jane, this is our New Year's edition. It's the first day of the new year, so we want to wish our listeners a very happy, healthy new year to start with. That's right. Healthy and happy. And that's very important in today's uh, world. Yeah. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. So the new year brings a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. Uh, there's a lot of, hopefully, there'll, there'll be a lot of good things for the for our audience. Uh, but one of the things everyone, unfortunately, will have to consider getting ready to do at some point is to get their taxes ready. It's Absolutely. going to be tax season. It's going to be here before you know it, come February, come March. Um, and with owning property and with, with owning uh, principal residence or investment property, there's um, a lot of a lot of real estate. Uh, you, need, you need tax knowledge to know what's yes, deductible, you need an expert. what's yeah. not deductible. So yes, you need an expert. And we have another. We have a tax accountant expert with us today. He's back for a second show. He joined us last year, and it was very informative. And we had to have him back. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome AJ Kumar of Sci CPA Services. He's AJ's, a, of course, a CPA, and we're going to talk about some general guidance um, as to real estate tax accounting principles. Again, this is just general guidance. If you have any uh, specific needs or consultation or need your t- help with your taxes, please call AJ. So, AJ, welcome to our show. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Jane. And a very, very happy new year to all our listeners. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, AJ, before we start, are there any rules or any chance that the IRS could eliminate the taxes? For like, uh, or you know, <laughs> give like anything at all? Like, I wish I, so, yeah. Or, or I, maybe... Or give, I don't think okay. you wish so, because uh-huh. if that's so, the accountant yeah. will lose half of the business. Well, well, well no, <laughs> at least put more on the corporations <laughs> and let, leave the residents of New Jersey alone, right? Uh, there are a lot of uh, states who yeah, do that. Say yeah, Florida, Texas, yeah, there are some yeah, states uh, that do not have the personal tax. And in yeah. those states, they try yeah. to recoup the money from the businesses. You're right. But the businesses, I guess, are already stressed to a certain point, so they have to get something from the residents. But we're not going to cover all about the, um, the the taxes. We want to concentrate on the real estate aspect of what's deductible, because our show is primarily about real estate, so we want to tie Absolutely. in. But uh, with home ownership or with owning investment properties, there's a large aspect. It's very important that the that the audience has some general ideas of what's tax deductible and what's not, so they know they can do their homework during the year or or you know, at this point and gather the necessary information. So when they go to see you or do it themselves, they have that, they have what's the knowledge they need to properly fill out the paperwork. Absolutely, Ken. You rightly said a little bit of preparation can make a huge difference to the tax liability. So we cannot eliminate <laughs> the taxes. IRS is so, not going to remove the taxes, but yeah. the onus, the responsibility remains on the listeners, on the individuals, to do some homework prior to selling the house, buying the house, so they can plan for their taxes properly. Absolutely. So this show, we're going to try to cover the principal residence um, tax deductions, and then and then the latter half of the show uh, tie in the investment properties, what's deductible. So let's start with the principal residence. So in New Jersey, if you if it's your marital home, I guess it's defined as your principal residence. And let's talk about if anything is deductible, uh, assuming you don't sell the house first. Is there anything you can deduct, whether you have home repairs or um, you know a mortgage interest? So let's talk about that. Uh, absolutely. Um, so if you are a homeowner, you need to listen to the show, uh, Ken and Jane show. There are certain deductions, including but not limited to property taxes, the mortgage interest. Uh, unfortunately, property tax is limited to $10,000, and it's not just property tax, can It's sold, state and local tax. Property tax is a type of local tax. It's paid to the municipality. So state income tax and local municipality tax, including the property tax, mm-hmm. is all limited to maximum of $10,000. Oh, so in other words, if I, <clears throat> if the if the um, the state or I'm sorry, the the property tax, let's say, is seven thousand, but then uh, and then the the other taxes you have are uh, four thousand, you can only claim uh, ten thousand. If the total is eleven, you you lose that one thousand is not deductible. Absolutely, especially in New Jersey, most homes have property tax over ten thousand. Most people work 
in New York or have W-2. So their state income tax is already over 10,000. So a lot of people in New Jersey loses the complete deduction for property tax because the sold state income tax and local tax, including the property tax, is limited to $10,000. Right. And I believe that this this limitation was passed in the in the, the prior uh, Trump administration. It was a federal, it's a federal because IRS is the federal body, uh, because I remember that New Jersey and some of the northeastern states where the taxes, where the property taxes are typically could be more than 10,000 were hit the hardest, whereas if you're in the Midwest or, you know, some of the, you know, more, you know, more property tax friendly states, there was no real reaction. But I remember New Jersey residents, we reacted a little bit stronger because in in New Jersey, uh, certain most property taxes, not unusual to have homes with property taxes in the, uh, exceeding $10,000 per year. You are 100% right, Ken. So the, the rule was passed under CARES Act that came in 2017 under Trump administration. And there were a lot of talks about the blue state and the red state and the blue states oh. being more affected than the red states. But I mean, it doesn't matter how it happened and, and, and when it happened right now, this is what we are stuck with. Right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Exactly. Um, okay. So, how about mortgage interest? On if you're a homeowner, a lot of people have you know have a mortgage. So the the deduction on the mortgage interest is there a limit on how much you can deduct or you can? There is and there is none. So mortgage interest by amount has no limit. You can deduct mortgage interest as much as you are paying, except up to the principal value of a million dollar. So take an example, if your loan value on your primary home is $1.5 million, this is what the loan you took, you are only allowed to deduct two-thirds of the mortgage interest because the principal uh, mortgage, that amount cannot be more than a million dollar for it to be deductible. But take an example, let's say uh, there is one individual who is paying 10% interest on a million dollar. Mm-hmm. This individual is allowed to deduct $100,000. But then there is another individual who has $2 million of debt at 5%. This person is only allowed to deduct 50000 So there is no limit on the amount as such, but the debt amount has to be up to or under $1 million. Okay, that seems That's like it's very a pr- important because right. uh, it's not the property purchase price a million or the value a million. It is the debt. The mortgage Absolutely. is a million. Absolutely, Jane. You're one hundred percent right, Jane. Mm-hmm. The mortgage interest about In, yeah, yeah. The mortgage amount. Mortgage amount. amount yeah. Mortgage is amount a is a below million, million, a million, which is most of the people fill in that category. category but Absolutely. some may fall outside that category, yes. yeah. especially in New Jersey. You have lux- a lot of luxury homes in Colts right. Neck and you know other mm-hmm. areas where there's. You know, yeah. multi-million dollar property. So, over, but the majority, but, I mean, the mainstream like us, you know, right. definitely, you know, the yes. house not even worth a million. Uh, yeah. even long, 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 right, I, that's right. The, the property so, is not but, worth it. But it's that. interesting. I didn't know that. So there's not an unlimited cap. The cap is like as AJ well, just the said. The amount so, is unlimited. Yeah. If your but, amount is less but, than a million dollar in debt, if as long as it, yeah, and let's say you are paying hypothetically thirty percent interest, you are allowed three hundred thousand dollars deduction. Yes. So mm-hmm. there is no cap on the amount as such. Is the mortgage debt debt amount? Debt amount. amount. It's a million a dollar cap. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I think that's more leveled out the plan field. I, I, you I know, agree. That's I, more leveled out because if you yeah. can afford a million dollars uh, more debt, right, the property value has to be really much higher than the average people, average income earners. So, yeah. So, in other words, if you have a mortgage, if somebody has a homeowner has a mortgage debt of $2 million, there's there are they allowed to deduct up to a million of no, that? They're allowed that, to deduct up to fifty percent of their total interest. Oh, okay, that's a different another. Gotcha. Oh, another gap. Okay, another yeah. gap. So that's why you, they counted you. That's why they that's really why need to consult you because a, this the, is, uh, the, before the, as if the, you have one point five million, you only allowed fifty percent. Fifty percent. No, two thirds. Two thirds. Yeah. Sorry. Two-third. So you weren't paying attention. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I would yeah. like to remind our listeners: if you have any question, these uh, a lot of this information is very case sensitive. Yeah. So please mention Can and Jane show, and we, you will have free consultation. Oh, yes, thank yes. you, thank you, AJ, yeah. thank you. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you, AJ, I was going to give that at the break too. But please, uh, why don't you give your uh, contact uh, number now because you might your phone may be ringing off the hook after <laughs> after, after hearing some of this. Uh, absolutely, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned it. I'll give you my, I'll give you my number, my cell number, my office number. My cell number is nine zero eight three eight zero six eight. Seven six. My office number is nine zero eight 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 
8901210. So we have 12 lines, 8900, 8901, 8902. But if nobody is picking up the phone because the phone is of the hook, <laughs> Which yeah. is please call my cell. Please text me at 908. Three eight zero six eight seven six. Mention Ken and Jane Show, and you will definitely get the call and free consultation. Oh, right, thank right. you. That's and your kind. office is located uh, centrally in East Brunswick, Absolutely. Uh, right? And uh, our what's your address, please? And uh, we have two offices in New Jersey: one in Monroe, one in East Brunswick. Our East Brunswick office is one hour court. We are on second floor, East Brunswick, New Jersey. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, let's continue talking about the principal residence. So now we're going to switch gears to if a homeowner uh, sold their principal residence in New Jersey in the tax year 2022. Uh, talk about the the tax consequences and the you know limitations and the qualifications if you are exempt from the uh, tax. So as long as the homeowner has been living in that home for at least two years before selling the house in. most recent 5 years there is no tax consequences as long as the gain is under half a million dollar assuming married filing joint situation for a married filing separate or single filers the limit is 250000 meaning 250000 of capital gain is non taxable Okay, that's good. So let's do an example because there's something important to realize about the gain, how the gain can be reduced that the listeners may not realize. If they look at if a listener looks bought the home 20 years ago and they paid let's say hypothetically 250,000, they sold it 20 years later, let's say for a, a million. So the the on paper, the gain would be 750,000. So there would be some tax consequences. However, um Let's why don't we take a break and then we're going to talk about how it's why it's important to keep the receipts and other home improvements how that can reduce your gain. You know so, what? I can just want to give everybody a question so people can think about it during the break. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for the new year, right? And get their cup of coffee that they're going to need to start the day after the, right. that was a long night last night. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back right after these messages. Okay, welcome back to our show. They we're joined uh, today with um, AJ Kumar of. Um, Sai CPA Services and AJ let's continue that example of how the basis how why it's important for a homeowner to keep their home improvement receipts and how it can deduct uh, how it can uh, reduce their gain which could be consequential if their gain if they're a married couple and their gain is more than 500,000 anything over that 500,000 would be taxable but however you can the homeowners can uh, do certain things with home improvements like if they put 50,000 into improving their kitchen and and other things so if you can expand on on that principle please absolutely 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 can so uh, the way it works your basis in the property is the purchase price including the commissions that you had to pay to anybody uh, plus all the improvements capital improvements that you have done in the house including but not limited to painting the house fixing the kitchen fixing the bathroom in our example if you bought the house 20 years ago then more than likely you have fixed lot of things in and around the house it may be roof it may be floor it may be outside garden it may be the the patio if you can maintain such receipts and the receipts have to be substantiated by the payment meaning you can't ju- just c- collect all the receipts from the vendors from the contractors you have to show the proof of payment and it has to be contemporaneous meaning you cannot really say uh, i got this receipt for 2002 and here is the payment voucher that i did in 2010 if you have a receipt uh, an invoice in 2002 irs would want to see a payment in 2002 i mean the year is not important the timing let's say if you have the invoice of december 2002 you want to see the payment in january 2003 february 2003 meaning within the same period in the same time and you don't have to sort of uh, create an excel spreadsheet i prefer using a shoe box approach create a small box wherever you have the improvement whatever receipts you have just throw it in there so if the need be i uh, in 10 years 15 years 20 years you have a place to go and mm. add up all those receipts to justify that even though i bought the house for 250000 i had improvements worth 300000 so even if i'm selling the house for a million dollar my actual gain is under 
500,000, so I don't owe any taxes. Right. That's a very good point, AJ. You mentioned about proof of payments. So in, in that scenario, would the IRS want you to show a proof of a ca- of a cash check as well? Because otherwise, on a receipt, you could write paid on uh, J- January 1st, uh, 2022, check number, but then they could take it one step further and say, well, show me that. that if you're saying a receipt is not good enough, then they, I would assume the IRS wants either the credit card transaction receipt or the canceled check receipt if they were to do an audit. To uh, absolutely. We would want to see yeah. the bank statement yeah. somehow or the credit card statement that clearly shows that the payment actually went out right. of your account to somebody else. So an important thing for listeners to keep in mind is that if you do a major improvement, it's important to get a copy or, or unless you have it online. A lot of it's online for seven years or so, but it's important. I think it's important in this day and age still to get a paper copy. If you paid 50000 to a contractor via checks, and you're gonna, you should keep a paper copy because maybe in 20, 30 years, you won't be able to go back online and get those bank receipts. So it's just a good practice, right? You are 100% right. But uh, the, the good thing is, even though the individuals like me and you can, cannot go to bank after a certain number of years, but IRS can. If you have a canceled check, if you have a proof of check, IRS can summon the bank and verify if the check was paid. Oh, off. well, that's that's comforting too. Yes. That's good. That's absolutely. a little, that's a fail safe feature. Uh, absolutely. And that's yeah. comforting only yeah. they want to catch you. Right. It's not like you claim yeah. the IRS going to go there, help you to get a receipt. If you don't have a receipt, right. but, you may not but able tr- to claim. But it's good if you truly did have the yeah. receipt and, right. and you lost, you couldn't find the check, the canceled check, then, it, then it's- It has com- to be big amount. Yeah. I think that the, today's the, the day, Technology is so uh, advanced, right? I mean, you have a receipt, you have a payment check or credit card. Just take a photo and save that in your Google, Google Drive, Google drive yeah. and then that would be there always. Yeah, you know, like uh, make a year to you know twenty twenty three, and today's the first day. You just start a year, so whatever you make that, so you don't have to you know fingertips, right? Absolutely. So a lot of time, our client asks for some past year's uh, information. Used to be, we have to put a request in, dig out the box. The you know boss have to find where the storage because normally only up to six years seven years so now you just own in the in the drive mm-hmm. so and, yeah and, and the shoebox approach is still good what I've been Absolutely. doing now is still using the shoebox approach for the paper receipts but also taking the liberty to use my phone or or a scanner and scan them into the Google Drive so like for you know restaurant receipts and things but still keep both. Even though you it's more arduous, but it's but it's good. You never know what yeah what could happen if there's you know if the electronic them. gone. You, know? <laughs> you have the paper, and if the paper is gone from a fire or something, you have the electronic. Hopefully, if the electric so, gone, you have a paper. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. Good. Let's talk. Let's switch gears now and talk about investment properties. We we spoke. Let's talk about what what's deductible for the landlords in New Jersey on a federal and state level. If you have an investment property and you have uh, repairs during the year, pest control, cleaning services, um, and Miscellaneous, I absolutely can. So the short answer is everything. <laughs> Any expense that you wouldn't have had if you did not have this property is all deductible expense. You may not get the tax uh, benefit immediately, and we'll explain that in a in a minute. But uh, for the investment property, there is no limit on the property tax. You can deduct the property tax whatever the property tax is, 100%. So if you recall in the first segment, we reminded our listeners that the property tax has a limit of 10000 that includes the state and local tax. Mm-hmm. But for the investment property, there is no such ceiling. There is no such limit. If you recall in our first segment, we reminded our listeners that there is a $1 million debt cap on the primary home. There is no such debt cap on the investment property. So if you have an investment property, eight apartment building, and you have a loan of $4 million, all the interest that you are paying is all deductible interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the repairs are deductible. Um, The repairs, the insurance, uh, that's another thing. Home insurance on the primary home is not deductible, but the insurance on the investment property is a deductible expense. Right. Anything that you pay to the realtor uh, in terms of finding the Right. The, the commission property, fee. the commission fee, the insurance, the repair, the water bill, anything that you have for this property 
that you wouldn't have had if you did not have this property in theory mm-hmm. is right. old deductible expense. Um, here's another question. I know sometimes, how about if the if the landlord travels um, to the property to view, uh, you know, if there's a problem or an issue, how about the mileage uh, costs? I know, I've heard that that is a possibility. Is that deductible? That is deductible. So the so, IRS provides certain rate, uh, 57.5 cent was for 22. So IRS provides these rates as how many miles you have, where you live, where is the rental property, how many times you you went there, and it all has to be reasonable. If you say, I went there 30 times in a month to collect the rent, yeah, and they, you are inviting the audit. But yeah. if you say one time, two time, it's all fair. You, right. you, you put the mileage, you put the, uh, the rate, and mm-hmm. that's a deductible expense. What you cannot deduct is your time. Say, I'm an accountant, I earn $10 an hour, and I say, you know what? It took me two hours to go there. So uh, my time of $20 should be paid too. That's not deductible. What's deductible right. is my primary home and my rental home is, let's say, 20 miles away. I went there two times. Going there, coming back, total 80 miles at 57.5 cent. That's what's deductible. Mm-hmm. What about appliances? So typically with rental properties, like like everything in life, things break. Refrigerators, washer, dryers. After a certain amount of time, things don't last forever. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of, of the world we live in. How are um, how are capital improvement expenditures um, um, accounted? F- yeah, I guess accounted for. We're talking about accounting. That's the best word. Accounted uh, for in, in the absolutely. accounting scheme. So for the residential property, we typically use twenty seven point five years of depreciation on the main. Uh, structure. But then, you know, the appliances don't last 27 years anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, then for the appliances, we have to use either five years or seven years, depending on the type of appliances. Longer the duration you use, lesser benefit you are getting for the depreciation. Because let's say if you bought something for $7,000 and you choose seven years depreciation. Yeah, let's say a refrigerator. Let's say you got a that super, is. the best refrigerator, which is probably is right. uh, probably not even yeah. seven, that probably much more, but let's, but let's, let's say, say 7000 yeah. And you use seven years of depreciation. Then you are uh, claiming $1,000 every year for next seven years, as opposed to using five years of depreciation, we are using $1,400 of deduction. So IRS prefers you use longer duration as opposed to the shorter duration. If you are buying a refrigerator and trying to push for three years of depreciation, you are inviting problems. Uh, so, mm-hmm. And you have to also know that a lot of rental losses, let's say your total income is $30,000 in the rental income and your total expenses, including depreciation, mortgage interest, mm-hmm. property tax, everything is $36,000. Right. So in theory, you have a loss of $6,000 that you are trying to get the benefit. But on your tax return, you will find that it's being pushed as a passive loss and your income is not coming down. You are still paying tax on the same amount. Mm -hmm. And the $6,000 is a suspended loss. You are not getting the tax benefit. Okay. You just don't owe any taxes on the rental property, but you can't apply that passive loss to your active to your in- a- active income. Income, right? So that's so, why they carried over, I guess, to the next next year, year or until you sell the property. Ah, okay. In that case, it's very important not to go out of your way to claim more depreciation than necessary. If you're not getting the tax benefit anyway, then why go for a smaller duration? Increase the depreciation because if the loss is six thousand or eight thousand or ten thousand, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're not getting any immediate benefit. It's just lowering the basis for your property. Right. But let's go back to the question on depreciation and the timeline. I know that residential structures have a 27-year, but I thought, aren't appliances, aren't they fixed? Isn't everyone uh, required to have the same um, useful life claim, seven years or five years? You you indicated in our in the previous answer that that people uh, that I guess the accountants or the individuals can can kind of pick and choose. Yes, you I, can. It's not, so it's not rigid. It's not fixed. It's, that if all appliances have to are presumed to be by the by the IRS on a seven year cycle or a ten year, or they can there there's latitude. In that? Absolutely. Say for example, you have a, a rental property, nice rental property, and you had to fix the loan. The loan is not going to last seven years. The loan will have much lesser duration. So there is a study, it's called cost segregation study. Take Extend this example to uh, a commercial rental property where you have a motel. The motel has the the 100 rooms. They have the microwave to bed and a a lot of uh, fixing around. Mm -hmm. In that case, having a cost segregation study will be very helpful where you can have the assets divided into three years, five years, seven years, and 27 or 39 years type of bucket 
to claim the right of depreciation. I see. So I guess the follow-up question is, are the buckets fixed by the IRS that either you, your choice yes. are either three-year, five-year, seven-year, or the 27-year? For the, 10 years oh, as okay, well. Okay, so you can't, it's not totally random, but you have to, so the so the taxpayer or the accountant is given the, the latitude, some discretion as to what bucket to place the Absolutely. appliances in based on the scenario. If it's if it's in a motel where it gets a lot of wear and use, it could be on a, on a shorter Absolutely. scale because the likelihood is it would could wear out after three years or maybe some apartments that get a lot of heavy you know maybe Absolutely. with college kids that are using it they're gonna the refrigerator <laughs> won't last for seven years only last for, and really it depends so, on how how expensive but, is appliances get uh, for example absolutely. if and, you uh, have a rental property you have a fifteen hundred dollars refrigerator fifteen hundred or a thousand bucks you could obviously um, three years uh, absolutely. five years and you don't but, have to have it new yeah sometimes we have these used equipment where the life will be much mm. lower than if the same equipment was new. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really so. It's very on. yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of scenarios. A lot of even though it's accounting, which is numbers, there's a lot of there. There is some. There's a lot of record keeping. A lot of you know you have to be case very detailed. Case. But there's a lot of case by case. A lot of judgments. Unfortunately, we're out of time, and uh, I want to cover the uh, 10, um, 1031 exchanges, which we didn't get to. Uh, do you have a chance to come back next week so we can talk about that next Sunday? Absolutely. All right. It will be my pleasure. All right. Thank great. You. We're going to have you back next week. And AJ, once again, uh, can you please give the listeners your contact information so they can reach out to you? They're going to they're need help. <laughs> uh, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so my cell number is 908-380-6876. AJ Kumar, CPA. If I'm not able to pick up your phone, please mention Can and Jane Show. The consultation is free and I'll be happy to take your call. Just text me, email me, or give me a call. Thank you. And I will see you next week. I'll uh, be with you next week. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much, AJ, for taking time to be with us on this on this New Year's Day. We want to wish again everyone a happy and healthy New Year. Thank you. Thank you.